What's up everybody, Marl the Cross 316 back with another comic book haul and I have moved into my new apartment with my wife and so here is kind of the setup that we have here. This is my bookcase that you've seen in previous videos. Well, I've got it all loaded up. I got my amazing Spider-Man number 375 graded uh, 9.4 and right up at the very top. I got some of my other graded books, my Funko Pops. So yeah, folks, this is kind of going to be the new setup for my videos. And also just wanted to showcase this Iron Man, which I think is going to be kind of a uh, feature in um, upcoming hauls. I'm going to have him sitting on the side. And so I got this from Walgreens, actually. My wife surprised me with this action figure of Iron Man. It's kind of based off of the MCU version of Iron Man. And so, uh, just a really cool display piece that um, adds to um, everything I love about comic books. And uh, this just goes great with um, my bookcase. And so, now let's get into the book, shall we? So, this uh, purchases that I've gotten, they're all from eBay, of course. And um, eBay is my main thing that I use to buy comics nowadays. I don't really have a local comic book shop to go to. Um, I have one that's maybe like uh, 30 to 35 minutes away. I just don't feel like getting out. And uh, I can get everything I want on eBay. And so this is going to be a Copper Age haul. Um, it's Copper Age themed pretty much. That's what I've been really focusing on this year. If you've been keeping up with my hauls. And so right off the bat, we have a couple of Defenders books that I'm adding to um, my collection here. You know, if you've been keeping up with my hauls, that um, I'm a big Defenders fan, and I'm just trying to put together that entire volume one of Defenders. And I'm reading these in, um, when the, you know when they came out, basically, uh, I read, you know, issue 86. And so now I just wanted to read 87 and then I'll go back and collect the earlier issues and read those as well but um, Defenders is just kind of a unique uh, superhero group that a lot of people don't pay attention they don't really collect but I think they're a really cool team and uh, it's just been a goal of mine to collect the Defenders so we have issue number 87 here and then we also are going to have issue number 88 and, of course, I got all of these from mycomicshop.com. Some of them I have rebagged and boarded because um, the bags were kind of like this right here. Here's a, an example. When uh, they ship out these books, they don't really, uh, you know, put them in the best bags. And so this is a uh, an example right here where I have to basically... Uh, rebag and board this when I get some new bags and boards this is going to be one of the ones I rebag and put a new board in but here we have issue number 88 both of these issues number 87 and number 88 nothing spectacular nothing important about these issues they're just fillers for my defenders run now let's get into some fantastic four y'all know that I'm a big uh, John Byrne fan and I'm putting together his run of the Fantastic Four and this one is uh, Kind of a key right here. This is the first appearance of Kristoff who eventually becomes the second Doctor Doom and So Kristoff is just a little child here and he makes his first appearance He's adopted by the original Doctor Doom and this is a great story by the way Doctor Doom retakes Latveria and I mean, he is back in charge and uh, he basically, spoiler alert, kills the tyrant who was leading his land for the longest time. He retakes his throne in this issue and uh, Dr. Doom just looks so menacing on this cover. I love this cover. It's a great issue and I got it in very fine minus condition. So, definitely happy to add this to my Fantastic Four collection. And then we have issue number 248. And this one is in fine condition. And uh, this is features the Inhumans. The Inhumans, 
uh, go way back with the Fantastic Four, all the way back to issue number 45, which is a book that I'm definitely looking for to get graded, finding a graded copy of the first Inhumans. But this is a great looking cover right here, drawn by the great John Byrne here. Nightmare, it's a unique story here. Um, but nothing spectacular with this one. There's no, no key significance to this. It's just a part of the John Byrne run that I'm putting together. Because uh, if you know anything about John Byrne, he wrote and drew the Fantastic Four for a period of five years. And it is some of the best uh, Fantastic Four stories ever. Um, and so here we have Fantastic Four number 249. This is in fine condition. It is a direct copy. And this features Guardian, who is kind of like the um, security for Little Londra, who also... If you're an X-Men fan, know a lot about this character. He makes an appearance in the X-Men a lot. But he goes up against the Fantastic Four in this issue. And, I mean, it is one heck of a story here. I mean, he just clobbers the thing. Makes easy work out of all of the Fantastic Four. And if you have read issue 250, that is the concluding part. And I had showcased that in my previous haul. So definitely go back and look at that. Um, but this is one I just needed to add to the uh, collection because I didn't have it. Um, when I went to that local comic book shop last time, they didn't have this issue. So I bought this off of eBay and I'm glad to uh, have gotten it and I read it too. It's a great story. And here we have a very unique issue of a Fantastic Four here. This is all... The whole story and everything is written like this. I mean, like this. It's drawn and written just like this. So you gotta have to read the the book like this, and it's uh, very unique. It also features these free lakeside skin tattoos. And what's really cool about this one is you'll notice on issue number two forty nine we have sixty cents, but on this one we have seventy five cents. What does that mean? Well, basically, if you look at the sticker here, it says that this is a Canadian price variant. So really cool here. Um, got this pretty cheap, actually. I think I like got, purchased it for like $10. But you definitely look, need to look out for these Canadian price variants. They're a little bit more pricey and um, more rare. So definitely be on the lookout when you're looking for these uh, Copper Age issues and just look for that 75 cent price tag instead of the 60 cent when it comes to the Copper Age and you'll definitely know that that's a unique copy. It's not an American copy, it's Canadian. Now let's get into The Amazing Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man is another title I've been really uh, focusing on this year. My goal is basically to collect issues 266 all the way to 290. I'm making good progress so far. We're going to look at uh, three new additions to the collection here, starting with issue number 277, The Cry of the Wendigo. And this also features the mystery of the Hobgoblin as that mystery deepens. We have a guest appearance of Daredevil and Kingpin in this issue as well. This is in fine condition. And um, nothing uh, important with this issue. There's no key significance, but it's a really cool cover. It's a Charles Vest cover. It's kind of like a painted cover. And um, I just love this era of The Amazing Spider-Man because it features one of my favorite villains, the Hobgoblin. And there's that mystery surrounding who is the Hobgoblin. Uh, Flash Thompson had been framed as the Hobgoblin, and as you see in issue number 278 on the cover here, we have Flash Thompson, um, but this this cover right here, I just had read this book actually today, and this cover is kind of misleading. There's nothing to do with the 
unmasking of the hobgoblin in this issue it's just kind of a cover grab a um, it's like just trying to get people's attention here but this is also um important kind of an important issue because it's a death issue the death of um the wraith who is gene dewolf's brother he dies in this issue but um once again it's just a filler issue that i needed for my amazing spider-man collection as i'm putting together volume one of the amazing spider-man and then we have issue number 279 a very sharp copy love the colors on this one the, the colors just really pop on this cover here this uh starts or is continuing that story arc that began in i think um web of spider-man um, the Where is Spider-Man kind of storyline. Spider-Man, uh, for like a whole month, was not featured in the Amazing Spider-Man title or Web or Spectacular Spider-Man titles. Those three titles, Spider-Man was not in uh, these books. Spider-Man went missing. And so this is a, kind of a cool issue because this is the third appearance of Silver Sable. And it's the first cover appearance of Silver Sable. She makes her first cover appearance here. She goes up against Jack-O-Lantern. I have not read this issue, but I'm really looking forward to it. As I continue to uh, just read the Copper Age and get more familiarized with the Copper Age. Since uh, that's kind of my goal this year is to become more familiarized with the 80s. So let's go ahead now and drop on to uh, jump on to Web of Spider-Man. You know that that's one title I've been really focusing on. I'm focusing on all of the Spider-Man titles this year, um, especially with uh, the Copper Age. And Web of Spider-Man came out right when the Copper Age began. And um, I pretty much now have issues 1 through 17 which is really nice because when I go in my comic book box, in my long box, I can just thumb through them. And it, I just love how they're in all sequential order. And uh, that's what I really love about collecting is you can just go back and look and uh, just admire your collection. But this is a cool uh, issue right here because this features the first appearance of Chance. And if you are a big Venom fan, you know that that Todd McFarlane era of issues 298, 99, and 300. Well, issue 298 has Chance on the cover. Well, he makes his first appearance in this particular issue right here, issue number 15. Have you ever wondered who Spider-Man was going up against in that on that cover of issue number 298 of Amazing Spider-Man? This is the guy right here, Chance. He's like a... Um, he's kind of like a Boba Fett kind of character. He's a um, just a guy that is on hire trying to assassinate Spider-Man. And so here we have his first appearance in issue number 15. Definitely look out for this issue. It's a really cool issue. Here we have issue number 16. This is just a filler issue. Nothing uh, significant with this one. Right, Iron Man? Um, but uh, this is a cool issue. It's just kind of like a, a mystery story here. We have this family. Uh, her son goes missing. And we have this whole town is all uh, up in a roar. And Spider-Man gets up involved. It takes place in Virginia. Sp Peter Parker has to go out and uh, just kind of discover what is going on in this small town in Virginia. And this is a really sharp copy. It got this in very fine condition. And just happy to add it to my Web of Spider-Man collection. And here's what I was talking about, the missing in action storyline. This is where the story starts. So if you ever want to put that storyline together, the first issue you need to collect is issue number 17 of Web of Spider-Man. As Spider-Man goes up against Magma. This is not Magma's first appearance, but it is a really unique issue. It's a new stand, and I got this in fine condition. 
And so, um, really looking forward to reading this one. I have not read it yet, but uh, definitely a cool issue to get. Now let's go on to Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man. We're going to end off this video with a few Spectacular Spider-Man issues that I've been adding to my uh, collection here. My ever-growing collection. This features just a really unique cover here of uh, Spider-Man wearing his symbiote costume. It's not the symbiote suit. He had already got rid of it by that point but it's kind of like a coffee suit that the black uh, cat had made for him. And Aunt May's house has been invaded and Spider-Man has to come in for the rescue. Really unique story right here. It's a cool story featuring uh, Aunt May in peril with all of these lunatics raiding her home. And Spider-Man has to come in for the rescue. And then we have issue number 114. Nothing unique with this one. It's just a really cool cover. And it's a newsstand. I got this in, uh, well, actually I rebagged and boarded this one because it came in a really bad bag. But uh, definitely a cool cover. It's a newsstand copy. Issue number 115. I really love this cover here with that green swirls. It's kind of like a, uh, has a kind of like a Silver Age uh, look to it. It is in a direct edition, fine condition, uh, featuring Doctor Strange. Spider-Man goes to Doctor Strange's aid because Spider-Man has had a, um, kind of like a sequential events of bad luck and it comes to find out that Black Cat casted a spell on um, Spider-Man. She didn't mean to do it, but because of Doctor Strange's help, Black Cat loses her bad luck powers in this issue. And so uh, Black Cat is featured in this issue, and uh, it's a unique story. And so definitely if you are a Spider-Man collector, this is a unique story. Uh, cover and story to add to your collection. Now here we have a very unique uh, issue right here. Uh, this features the first appearance of the foreigner. I have no idea who that is. I don't even know what he looks like. I haven't read this issue yet. But this features uh, an appearance of Sabretooth, Wolverine's antagonist. And uh-oh, he has just ruined Spider-Man's last costume. Uh, pray for Sabretooth. So, oh wow. Really looking forward to reading this one right here. I got this in very good condition. But I think this looks better than a VG. But still, this one was more on the uh, upper end of um, the prices when I bought this off of eBay only because I think of the cover and it's a first appearance. And lastly, we're going to end this video off with an annual here. I added is annual number six, a spectacular Spider-Man. This is uh, Ace number two. If you remember, I picked up annual number five in a uh, previous comic book haul and that featured the first appearance of Ace. Well, Ace makes his second appearance in this issue. He is uh, going to court against his own brother. He's testifying against his own brother and Spider-Man gets involved and um, he finally, you know, fights Ace and Ace is uh, one of those kind of guys who's so cool and uh, He's trained in the martial arts that he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Spider-Man, and they're evenly matched. But uh, it's a unique character, definitely 80s-esque. You can tell he's, uh, I think, the creators of this character, uh, definitely influenced by Michael Jackson. He has that Michael Jackson look. But anyway, y'all, I hope y'all liked this uh, haul here. Uh, this is basically the comic books that I have amassed. And over the last two months, and I just uh, 
Hope y'all like this. Go ahead now and drop a like on this video, and I will see y'all in the next one.